Okay. So again, can everybody see me and can everybody hear me? Can everyone see me? And can everyone hear me? Okay, just a minute. Where is um Okay, you can see and hear me. Okay, Dana, salam alaikum. Okay, Latifa, you can see and hear. Alhamdulillah. Okay. All right, so maybe I won't stop. Okay, I, okay I'm not going to stop the video. I'm going to keep it going. Uh, but there are some sisters trying to get in. And... Okay, salamu alaikum Sabaria. Jamila Um Sakina, salamu alaikum. Okay, alhamdulillah. All right, so just takes a few minutes, I guess. Uh, I know some, some sisters are trying to get in. Okay, all right, so I'm going to start again. Okay, I'm going to start again, inshallah. It looks like it's, we got it going now, inshallah. <laughs> all right, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa salatu wa salam ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Wa alaykum as-salam wa rahmatullah. Yisraya, kif al-hal? Ahlan bikum. Uh, today, uh, our talk, we're talking about um, fathers. And the non-Muslims today, um, they've made a holiday of Father's Day and uh, as Mother's Day. And I mean, in Islam, we, we honor our parents every day. We always honor our parents. So um, <clears throat> we don't necessarily need a special day for that. But since we're talking about fathers, <laughs> um, we have many fathers in the Qur'an, uh, fathers that are mentioned in the Qur'an that we can look at their examples. And um, so I'm going to mention them and I'm going to put up their names in Arabic. Mm. Wow. Okay, so here's the first one. Okay, and that is, um, you can write the name on the side. I think you know who the first man, the first father, the first human, who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created from clean, from clay. And uh, subhanAllah, very amazing story about Adam alayhi salam. Um, so Allah informed the angels, inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa. There's another word for you, Khalifa, Khalifa, and Khalifa uh, is one who, who um, after him comes progeny, and after him comes descendants, and descendants, and descendants, like that, okay, and uh, so when Allah informed the angels, we're going to put a Khalifa in this uh, earth, the angels said, the angel said, are you going to put one in here who is going to just shed blood when all we do is glorify you? This is the angels responding to Allah. And Allah said, Inni a'lamu ma la ta'lamun. Inni, you know from Quran in my heart, inna, right? Inna is for ta'kid, for stress. Indeed, verily, and inni, Allah said, verily, I, indeed, I know what you don't know. And so uh, he created Adam. He brought all the animals forth and taught uh, Adam the names 
of the animals. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, taught Adam <clears throat> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught Adam uh, the names of the animals. Okay, وَعَلَّمَهُ أَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَا Allah taught him all of the names and then brought the angels forth, right? Um, and said, bow down to Adam. Now, this is really, really interesting because, again, these stories of the Qur'an, right? They, they're not here for our entertainment. They're really here for us to learn from and take examples from. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives Adam this dominion, gives him a dominion, right, over the garden, over the animals, and even asks the angels to bow down to him. Then, and then after all of that, Allah gives him a wife. Allah gives him a wife, right? After all of that, after teaching him, the, after creating him, putting him in the garden, giving him dominion over the garden, making, teaching him the names of the animals, uh, making the angels bow down to him. Then Allah gives him a wife. And Allah says, Uskun zawja, uh, anta wa wa minha shittuma. Allah said, live in the garden with your wife and eat from whatever you want except this one tree. Now, for us as women, when we marry, <laughs> right? When we marry, um, it's best to take this example and marry a man who has a dominion. Marry a man who has a dominion. He has a job, he has an income, he has a house, he has a car, he has some dominion. He's not, when the man marries, he's not coming with nothing. As the Prophet وسلم, said, Man istata'a min ya ma'ashr al-shabab. Man istata'a minkum al-ba'ata falyatazawwaju. Allah said, uh, uh, Messenger وسلم, He said, You young men, those of you who can build, who can uh, provide, then get married. Okay, so there's a there's a condition there. So, and, and we see that really clearly with Adam the first man, the first father, the first husband. Khalas? All right, so the next one we have... Alaykum salam wa rahmatullah. Is... Nuh. Nuh. Okay, the next one we have is Nuh, alayhi salam, Noah, Noah, and Noah has a, a big story because he was giving, um, he was preaching to his people for so many years. There's a surah, we have a surah in the Quran, surah Nuh. I don't, I don't know what number that is, uh, I, I'm not sure about the number, but surah Nuh. And how Allah, um, you know, reports was that he gave, he was preaching for so many years, hundreds of years to his people to worship one God. And to, to where he, he went to Allah and he complained. Inni da'utu qawmi laylan wa nahara. Rabbi, inni da'utu qawmi laylan wa nahara. I am calling my people night and day. They still don't get it. They still not listening. Okay, they just put their clothes over their ears. They close their ears, and they and they don't listen. And uh, and then even his own son, even his own son, you know. And Subhanallah, I mean, some there are are people who are guided. MashaAllah, Allah has guided them uh, by, you know, making them believers, strong believers, but their children go another way. 
you know, and so this is what happened with, with Nuh alayhi salam and his son, his son standing on the mountain, he's like, you know, come on, I'm trying to save you. And he doesn't, he goes the other way. So subhanAllah, um, Nuh is another father uh, of the Quran and an example of a father who was guided, but yet his, his own child um, did not, and even his own wife did not follow his guidance. That he, the guidance that he was given. Okay, the next father we have is Ibrahim. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Ibrahim. Ibrahim. Yes. <laughs> I don't know how to. No. Ibrahim, alayhi salam. So, uh, Ibrahim, we know the story uh, about him and his son. Yeah, his son Ismail, Ismail, and uh, we read that we we read or will read those ayat um, in Surah the Safat, in Surah a Safat. Nam um basir barakallahu fiki. Nam Dana, mashallah. Yeah, uh, we're gonna read those ayat in Surah the Safat, where. Uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam, he, he tells his son, Inni ya bunayya, ya bunayya, inni, you can say this to your son. If you have a son, you can say, ya bunayya. Ibni is a word, ibni, my son. But bunayya is more um, endearing. It's more endearing. Bunayya. Ya bunayya, inni ara fil manami anni adbahuka. He said to uh, his son, Ismail, Oh, my son, I see in the Arafil Manam, I see in a dream that I have slaughtered you. Fandor Mada Tara. So, what do you see? What do you think about this? Ismail, remember, was he was also a prophet, right? As, okay, so, so he said, Yeah, Abiti. So, we, we know the word Abi, Abi meaning father, uh, but Ibrahim used the word abiti with his father, and now Ismail uses the word abiti with his father. My dear, my dear father, Ya abiti if'al ma tu'mar, satajiduni insha'allahu min as sabirin He says, oh my, my uh, dear father, do what you have been ordered to do. Do what you have been ordered to do. Subhanallah. This is like a very, I mean, major level of obedience, major level of tawheed, major level of um, belief in Allah and trust in Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? And so just as uh, Ibrahim, oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, so just as um, so Ibrahim alayhi salam, just as he's um, about to you know slaughter his son, and 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 it's just such a major level of obedience to Allah and and trust in Allah that uh, Ibrahim trusts this dream because he knows the dream is real. Inni ara fil manami, anni adbahuka. I see in a dream fil manam, manam. You know the word noam. Sleep. Manam is a dream. Manam. Inni ara fil manami. Anni azbahuka. I see in a dream that I have slaughtered you. Fanzur mada tara. So what do you see? What do you think? 
And uh, Ismail, he says sweetly to his father, Ya abdi yaf'al ma tu'mar, satajiduni insha'allahu min as sabirin He said, oh my dear father, um, do what you've been ordered to do. And you will see me as among those who are patient. And so just as he's about to, you know, he put his head down and, and uh, subhanAllah slaughter him, then Allah puts a sheep or um, an animal in its place, in his place. And um, you can read this in Surah Saw Fat, Surah 37. They both, as father and son, they submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it was also interesting, you know, about uh, Ibrahim and Ismail and their relationship is that they weren't together all of his life. I mean, uh, if you if you remember, he took Hajar uh, into the desert. He took Hajar into the desert. This is where the well of Zamzam is coming from. And, and he, he was leaving her, right? And... She's going back and forth looking for water for her son, okay? The father was not there, uh, but yet then when he comes back, they have, they, they have this experience, then he leaves again, then he comes back again, and they build the Kaaba together. Then he leaves and he comes back again, and he's married, and then he tells him, you know, he gives him advice about his wife, and, and you know, you need to change your doorstep, right? So, so he's... It, it, it appears that Ibrahim is not like consistently there in his life, but yet there's still this very, very um, uh, endearing relationship between them as father and son. Right. So this Ibrahim and Ismail, and there's you know a lot more lessons that can can come from that that story. Um, the the next one I want to mention is. Uh, Yaqub. Yaqub. Uh, Yaqub's um, son. What was the name of his son? That there's a surah that's named after him. A surah is named after Yaqub's son. Uh, I'm going to write the name of his son. Naam Dana Yaqub and and his son uh, Yusuf alayhi salam. Mm. So Yaqub uh, and uh, Yusuf alayhi salam nam in Surah to Yusuf uh, where you know his brothers say oh let us take him out you know well first he has this dream and his father you know Yaqub he tells his father he tells his son don't tell your brothers about this dream that you had about these stars bowing down to you and so forth don't tell your brothers they're they're jealous and but on what happens is they end up taking him out and they you know throw him in the well and then they pretend that they um that he was eaten by a dip or um a wolf and if you go to um sort of yusuf uh probably after class i don't know if you because we have a delay here but in sort of yusuf there's a couple of words that you can find in the ayah 18, I believe it is. Yeah, ayah um, 18, like the word qamis. What is qamis? And what is dem? What is qamis? First of all, the word qamis. And it's <laughs> interesting that the word qamis <laughs> comes up a couple of times, a few times in Yusuf's uh, story. This this kamis is very symbolic, I'm, I'm, and I'm not I'm not sure of all the symbolism of it, but the kamis comes up 
a few times in Yusuf's story. The kameez is a shirt. Yeah. Naam, rahika. Assalamu alaikum. So the um this this kameez comes up when he's um when the brothers are trying to prove that you know he was eaten by the dip, and then another time later on, this kameez. When the wife of the Aziz, right, when she's trying to seduce him, and the shirt is the proof again that, um, that um, you know they ripped his shirt but from behind, right, and then later on towards the end of the story when Yaqub when the, when the brothers return back, and 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 Yaqub can smell he can smell Yusuf. On them, he he smells the scent of Yusuf, Subhanallah. So so this this deep love that Yaqub had for his son, and, as he's he's like his favorite. And I know it's not it's not usually right for a parent to have favorites, right? You're not supposed to have favorites. You're supposed to love all your kids the same. Um, and I think parents sometimes do have favorites. Well, sometimes they love their children differently for different reasons, for, for different uh, fadl, you know, fadail, different um, things that are special about or particular about each one. Like my dad, you say, you know, well, I love you the most. I love you because you're the oldest. And I love your sister because she's the youngest. And I love your brother because he's my, my only son, you know, so like different reasons for, um, you no, know, for loving children differently. Bye. All right, so another Nabi we have also, and there's a surah named after him. Mm-hmm. Who is that? Actually, there's two of them I'm going to mention together. That first one and this one. Okay. So those two, Nam. Um Basir, Nam. Jazakallah khair. Dana, yes, Um Sakina, Nam, uh, Imran, and we have the Surah Ali Imran, Ali Imran, the family of Imran, the Surah number three, um, and also in in um, like in conjunction, well, because they're all they're from the same family, so in conjunction with Imran's story, we have also the story of. Zakaria, Zakaria, and they they both. Oh, you're here, alhamdulillah. <laughs> Salam alaikum, sister. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So we so so we see their two stories in conjunction. You know, um, or like parallel stories. Mashallah, uh, Imran and Zakaria, and um, uh, they they both are are praying for for children. You know, um, Imran. And, you know, now they're they're coming from the um, lineage of Musa, alayhi salam. Still, the children of Israel. They're still carrying the Torah. And um, Imran, you know, he he wants to have a child to carry on this tradition. So he's praying for a child. And you can see, um, actually, the du'a of Zakaria in Surah to Maryam. Ah, okay, Surah to Maryam. Where is Surah Maryam? What's the Surah that's before Surah Maryam? Because we we learn this in um, Quran in my heart. Remember the middle point of the Quran, and then after, right after it, is um, Surah Maryam. So what sort of is before Maryam? Uh, 
Okay, Nam, Jazakallah Khair, Sister Yah, uh, Surat Al Kahf. That's to remember that's the middle point. So right after that is Surat Al Maryam. So Surat Al Maryam, okay, it starts with Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. Kaf ha yain sad. Dikru rahmati Rabbi ka abdahu Zakaria. إذ نادى ربه نداء خفيا قال رب إني وهن العظم مني واشتعل الرأس شيبا ولم أكن بدعائك ربك شقيا so this is the dua of Zakaria um he's saying uh, uh, oh my lord um my 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 hair has gotten gray or white my bones are old um but I want to have a child. I want to have a child, you know. So he's making this uh, very quiet du'a and khafiya, right? It's a, it's a quiet du'a. And, you know, that's a good example for us. Subhanallah, he will be hamdu, subhanallah, lazim. You know, we, especially as women, we have such a habit of doing something that is very detrimental to our iman and very detrimental to our lives okay you want to know what it is complaining we do a lot of complaining okay so in the story of um, in the surah Maryam uh, right at the beginning of surah to Maryam because the 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 um it's Ali Imran, right? So they're all the family of Imran, they're one family, their stories are parallel. Imran and Zachariah, they're both praying for children. And so Surah to Maryam, uh, we see the dua of Zachariah, and he made a quiet dua. And so really um and, and just like in Surah the uh, uh Mujadila, just like in Al Mujadila, uh the Sahabiya, she was a companion, Hawla. Her name was Khawla, and her husband divorced her in a way that was not uh, permissible. It's called a zihar. He said, you're like my mother's back, right? And so she made a quiet, quiet dua, a quiet dua. And here, Zakaria is making a quiet dua, nida'an or dua'an khafiya, just between him and Allah. And see, sometimes we get into complaining, right? We get into complaining about our situation. We get on the phone to our friends and we say, oh, you know, oh, my marriage is so bad. My kids are so bad. My my money is not right. Um, I hate my job. My coworkers get on my nerves. My boss is, you know, giving me the blues um, or whatever. Or, or we complain about our health. Oh, my knees hurt. My back hurts. Oh, I woke up this morning with a headache. Oh, you know, we... we uh, we do a lot of complaining and um, I'm, I'm not saying not to mention something that's going wrong. I'm not saying don't mention it, but I'm saying when we get into uh, that habit, right, it becomes like a song. It becomes like a song and dance, you know, like got no money, no money, no money, no money. Or, you know, oh, you know, we're so, I, I'm so poor or, or I'm so hurt. I'm so heartbroken. Oh, men are just dogs, 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 right? It just becomes like a song and a dance, right? Because it goes on so much. And unfortunately on social media, subhanAllah, it's like, it's just like a song and a dance every day, really. And um, it's so detrimental. It is so detrimental to be in the habit of complaining because you're reinforcing, you're reinforcing negative beliefs about your life. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلِلَّهِ خَزَائِنُ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ To him belong the treasures of the heavens and the earth. And Allah said, يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَصْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنُطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Oh my servants who have transgressed against themselves. Oh my servants who have transgressed against themselves. Do not despair of the mercy of Allah. Complaining is a kind of despairing, even though it might feel like I'm doing something because I'm, I'm, I'm talking about how bad it is, but it is a form of despair and it's reinforcing that on your mind, your heart, and your soul. And the believer doesn't walk around in despair. The believer always has hope. Allah is going to forgive me. Allah is going to give me what I need, what I desire. Allah is going to open up the doors of his rizq 
of his great provision for me. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but I believe that it's coming. And I keep asking, like Zechariah was asking, like Imran was asking, and not just asking, but believing that it will come. He's an old man with white hair. He's in his ta'ala ratsi shaba. He's in my hair. He's, he's white. My bones are decrepit. And he's still making dua. You see? So that's, that's the kind of hope that we have to have, right? While doing the actions, while doing the actions that would lead up to that result. Okay, so um, that, that's, that's a really good example there. Um, you know, that's a really good example there. Uh, his, the, the dua of Zechariah as, as a father and that he also had a plan. You know, uh, Zechariah, both Zechariah and Imran, they asked for these children and they had specific purposes why they wanted these children. They didn't just ask for children just for enjoyment. They had specific purposes for these children. They, they wanted them to carry on this, this tradition. And Maryam, uh, you know, her mom said, <laughs> I, I, I gave birth to a girl, you know. And, and, and subhanAllah, because she, she had intended to um, dedicate this child to the service of the um, I'm, I'm not sure what, what they called their worship place. It wasn't a, a, a masjid. For us, it's a masjid. Uh, them children of Israel, their place of worship. She was dedicated uh, to, to that place. And so Zechariah, they, they threw the pens and he became her guardian. He was her guardian and her uncle as well. You know, and uh, who did um, um, Zechariah give birth to? So Imran, his wife gave birth to Maryam, Zechariah, his wife gave birth to who? Who's who's Zechariah's son? Hmm. Who, who's Zechariah's son? <laughs> hmm. Yahya. Yahya. Ya Yahya, khud al kitab bi Allah said, "Take the book, Yahya. Take the book in a strong way." And 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 he was preaching from uh, when he was very very young, Yahya, right? So so is Imran and Maryam, Zakaria and Yahya, and so this is the family of uh, Imran. They're one family with their lineage back to Musa and. Harun, they from the same uh, lineage. As um, when Maryam came back with the baby, Isa, right? And and the, the Jews, they said, you, you are a descendant of Musa and Harun. How dare you bring such a situation here where you have a child with no father, right? So so this was their, their lineage. Khair. Okay, so another father... Uh, I want to mention now this one he's not a prophet but he's a very wise man a very wise man uh, and there's a surah named after him in the Quran Okay, and a surah, we've got a surah named after him in the Quran, uh, Luqman. Luqman. Now, uh, Luqman, there's a surah named after him in the Quran. So I'm trying to keep up with my um, my sisters on WhatsApp. Okay, so, yes, Umbasi. Okay, Luqman, he, um, he uh, Luqman was a very, very wise man. All right, so, I mean, most of the scholars say he wasn't a prophet, and Allah knows best. But Allah blessed him with some serious wisdom. And um, so, now Luqman, where was Luqman from? 
Where, where was he from, by the way? You have to know this. <laughs> you have to know this. Where was Lukman from? Lukman. Lukman. Mm. Where was Lukman first? Alayhi assalam wa rahmatullah. <laughs> Lukman was from, he was an African. He was from Ethiopia. He was from Habasha. Yeah. Um, and there's a surah, we have a surah Lukman, right? And the advice is that he gave to his son, the Nasa'ih. Nasa'ih. Nasiha is the single form, Nasiha. And the plural, Nasa'ih. So uh, Lukman, he gave uh, these advices to his, his son. And the first advice was, Ya Bunaya la tushrik billah. Inna shirka la zulmun azim. My son, don't make any partners with Allah because that is shirk. Don't worship anything other than Allah or along with Allah. That is shirk. And shirk is the big oppression. La zulmun azim. Um, and Luqman gave many beautiful advice. He gave some beautiful, beautiful advices to his son. For example, um, he told his son, "Don't turn your cheek, don't don't turn your cheek to people like." And it what, what it means is, don't be arrogant. Don't be arrogant with people. You know, don't say, you know, and turn your cheek to them. No, speak to people with respect. Walk in the earth as if you have a purpose. Don't just be like lallygagging, but have a purpose in, in where you're going and what you're doing. There's many advices. Don't make loud noises because the loud noise, the, the worst sound is the braying of the donkey. Um, hold on. Let's find sort of the Luqman. Okay. We know, of course, it's in the second uh, second uh, half of the Quran, right? After... Um, uh, Is after uh, oh, it's not there for it. it's near uh, Sejda, yeah, yes, yeah, right. Okay, so sort of the Sejda right before Sejda is Lukman, Lukman, and it's, it's just a few pages, really. I mean, um, if you if you took just I don't know, depend on how fast you read, depend on how fast you read. Um, you might be able to, you know, read Lukman in one day or um, in a couple of days, okay, in two or three days. So, look, and Lukman, he gives these advices to his son, um, like, don't, like I said, don't be arrogant, um, be thankful, and be dutiful to your parents. That was the other thing. And if your parents, uh, unless your parents, tell you to disobey Allah be dutiful to your parents that that's one of the lessons also of um here it is here wa in jahataka ala an tushrik bi ma laysa laka bihi ilm fala tuti'huma wa sahibuhuma fi dunya ma'rufa wa sahiba sahibahuma fi dunya ma'rufa sahibahuma fi dunya Marufa and be good, be um a good companion to your parents. So that's uh, Lukman, yeah. Um, then he also tells him, uh, yeah, Bunaya, aqim as salah, aqim as salah. Establish the prayer. Okay. Uh, what more bil maruf, wanha anil munkar. Forbid the wrong and order what is right. Uh, so you can read sort of the Luqman and the advices that he gave to his son. Very, very, very nice um, surah, mashallah, to, to spend time with. One another, uh, I will say one one other lesson of surah Luqman is he he um, was a thankful servant. Shukr. That's another lesson of surah Luqman is a shukr, gratitude, thankfulness. Do you know? I, I mentioned before about complaining, right? Um, and and by the way, um, complaining is the opposite of having patience. 
okay it's the opposite so in other words if you have a cup right let's say I have a mug right um, complaining and patience can't live in the same container <laughs> right they're not the same if you study Usul Thalatha if you study Usul Thalatha okay it talks in there about um, um, sabr the meaning of patience okay and and one of the meanings is no complaining now shukr gratitude goes along with sabr okay gratitude goes along with sabr sabr with shukr and ibn al-qayyim uh, if you've heard of this scholar old 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 scholar he he wrote a book called um patience and gratitude those two things go together. The um, Dawood, that's another uh, father. We didn't, <laughs> I didn't write his, write his name, but alhamdulillah, I mentioned him. Uh, Dawood, alayhi salam, right? Who was Dawood's son? Hold on, are there some comments I'm missing? Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm trying to keep up with, on WhatsApp here because <laughs> some people weren't able to come on Facebook. Okay, I know some people weren't able to come on Facebook, so I'm trying to keep up here. So, um, so, uh, make sure you read Surah Luqman and the advice that Luqman gave. Now, one other lesson I want to um, mention in Surah Luqman, which Luqman mentions, is a shukr, a shukr, and Allah and and Luqman mentions it, being grateful, thankful, and shukr and and sabr go together. Okay, shukr a sabr was shukr, patience and gratitude, and Ibn Al Qayyim. Uh, if you heard of him, a scholar who lived long, 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 long time ago, he wrote a book called Patience and Gratitude. And patience and gratitude, you know, is, is um, mm, these are uh, said to be the two wings of the believer. It's said to be the two wings of the believer, patience and gratitude. Mm. That means complaining is someplace else. Complaining is someplace else, and uh, in in Usul uh, al if you if you studied Usul al about the three questions of the grave, um, he, he you know the Sheikh he talks about um, sabr and gives the full meaning of sabr, full meaning of patience, and one of the meanings is no complaining, holding back the tongue from complaining, right? So. One of the lessons of Luqman is shukr. And I want to say also, shukr and sabr. We can connect it to the story of Dawood, another father, which I didn't write his name down, Dawood. Uh, um, the fast, the fast, the, the siyam, the fast that Dawood uh, used to observe, which we call the fast of, of Dawood, is what? One day on, one day off. One day fast, one day not fasting, right? Why? Because uh, in the explanation of the hadith, in the explanation of the hadith, right? I believe it was Ibn al-Hajar who said, in in the fast of Dawood, you're combining sabr and shukr. You're combining on the on the day that you're fasting, you're being patient. On the day that you're fasting, you're being patient. You're having sabr, and on the day that you're breaking your fast, you're having uh, shukr, uh, gratitude. Okay, the two wings of the believer, very important. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Okay, so now, um, let's go, okay, so now, um, no, 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 the advice of Luqman, hold on, is in Surah, the advice of Luqman is in Surah Luqman, Surah Luqman, Safat is the, uh, the story, uh oh, I'm sorry. Oh, now you're doing that. I'm, I'm just mad at my computer right now. All right, um, but I'm not complaining. Hold on, I'm thankful. Yes, I'm thankful. Okay. <laughs> okay, Surah so Luqman. The advice of Luqman is in Luqman. The um, in Surah Safat, I'm putting this in the comments. In Surah uh, Safat, you have the story of um, of Ibrahim and 
Ismail, um, you know, when they uh, submit uh, together, okay, when they submit together, that is in Surah Al-Safat. Khair. So now, um, I think I mentioned all of the, the fathers of the Quran that I was supposed to mention. Adam, <laughs> Adam, Manu, <laughs> or, uh, or, or who else did we mention? Ibrahim, alayhi salam, alayhi salam. If we want to say uh, peace on them all, we can say alayhim, alayhim, as salam. Um, we mentioned Zakaria, Imran, Luqman, Yaqub, <laughs> Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. So these are, and these are, um, yeah, these all we have we mentioned. So now, um, what about the fathers? Yeah, the fathers that we have in our lives, right? The, the fathers that we have in our lives, okay? This is, because... So now, what about the, we, we've mentioned all of these prophets, all of these um, NBA, NBA, Nabi is one, Nabi, NBA is the plural, okay? So we've mentioned all these NBA uh, from the Quran, fathers, Adam, Nuh, uh, Ibrahim, um, um, Yaqub, uh, Imran, Zakaria, uh, Luqman, so we've, we've mentioned all of them. And now, um, of course, because the Quran is for all times and the Quran is, you know, it's meant to be a guidance in real life, right? Not not just stories. We don't want this to be just stories that we is for our entertainment. Uh, but we, we want to take it and make it a part of our own life. OK, so fathers, right? We, we have um, fathers. Every one of us had to have a father. And so um, if we reflect upon, you know, the relationship that we have with our father, how do we feel about our fathers? Hmm. Do we have, uh, whether your father is Muslim or non-Muslim. Okay, let's say your father may not be a Muslim. Do you have the compassion that Ibrahim had for his father, alayhi salam. Ibrahim said to his father, Ya Abiti. He, he spoke sweetly to his father. And his father was making idols out of wood. But he had this, this compassion and he even made dua. Allah made, allowed him to make dua for his father. You know, so do we have this compassion for our fathers? I know um, a lot of people uh, in, in American society. Uh, 